this person. No, she wasn't looking up there. She, she heard the sound, I'm sure, and she probably smelled gunpowder, too. But the police, police officers that were right behind her, right behind the limousine right there, all smelled gun, one of them smelled gunpowder, but they were all sprayed by the effect of the president's head exploding mm -hmm. backwards. Mm -hmm. And um, this, to me, indicates a very close-range shot. When I showed this film to a police officer, he said, a rifle shot from long distance creates a mess, but it all stays right there. Mm -hmm. When you find <clears throat> a suicide where somebody, yeah, it is exactly what happened with President Kennedy, where it's a close-range shot, which, well, I think it was a close-range shot. Mm -hmm. The chain of evidence, uh, always so important in any crime, and uh, if we can look at that uh, mm -hmm. list, um, uh, there is no evidence. Right. If you're the people that are, have killed the president, mm -hmm. and you have access to all the all the evidence first before mm -hmm. the FBI, then you can control the story and uh, determine how the uh, how Oswald was later convict convicted, not convicted, but uh, accused. Mm -hmm. uh, the Secret Service had the uh, autopsy films and reports. They had control of that limousine. That limousine had a bullet hole in the windshield. That you could fit a pencil through. That you could fit a, fit a pencil through in they Dallas. They it's not. Right, and they had the power to switch it. Who can argue with uh, with it because the, the FBI trusted the Secret Service mm -hmm. and uh, who wouldn't? Um, the president's clothing was in the hands of the driver. The pieces of skull with the incriminating evidence of exit, which was brought in later, mm -hmm. was handled by the Secret Service. All the uh, ballistics, the bullets that linked Oswald to the rifle were found by the Secret Service. <clears throat> All the prime assassination witnesses. They had custody of Oswald's wife for a period of six weeks. Mm -hmm. And before they had custody of her, she said he was innocent. And afterwards, he, yeah, he did it. And he shot Lincoln, too. That was her attitude. This is such an irreverent question, in a way. I mean, I, I can't imagine that I would ask this, but it's something that everyone else has asked. Um, where is the brain of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy? It's missing, and it's been missing since 1967, when it was transferred from Admiral Berkeley's office to Robert Kennedy's office, and then to the National Archives. Uh, somewhere in those transferences, the tissue slides, which are very important evidence, which mm -hmm. needed to be looked at to determine just exactly the path of the bullet through the brain, and the brain itself, which is never sectioned to determine the direction of the bullet. All this is prime evidence which would resolve all, all of this controversy regarding the assassination. It's gone. I was appalled when I saw the autopsy photographs in David Lifton's book, and mm -hmm. I guess it's the only way that he can really make his case uh, by showing them. I certainly wouldn't show them on this program, although Nova, uh, whom I very much respect, showed it on its presentation right. uh, without warning, in fact. Um, right. Uh, the autopsy photographs, uh, tell me what they represent in 1988. If you look at the autopsy photographs at face value, they support the lone assassin conclusion. Two shots They from also behind. support your theory. You have in to the look at it that more closely. Yeah. Yes. In the sense that the wounds on the president now are diametrically opposed to the descriptions of the wounds in Dallas. And uh, nearly every witness, from Jacqueline Kennedy mm -hmm. to Clint Hill, the Secret Service agent, to all the doctors and nurses, mm -hmm. all of them said that the back of his head was blown out. Mm -hmm. Pictures don't show that. No, they don't. His skull <clears throat> shows signs of being reconstructed because... The, the, uh, even in the throat wound is much larger, even though they had uh, done a tracheotomy. The world's largest tracheotomy. Uh, this is almost four inches across his throat. Mm -hmm. um, Dallas doctors, of course, used that bullet hole to expand and put a trach tube in mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. the air into the windpipe. Amazing when we think that the doctor that did the autopsy burned his autopsy notes. The moment Lee Oswald was killed and he heard it on his radio or television is when he burned his notes because he realized imagine. he wouldn't have to go to trial and uh, be subject to cross-examination. He burned his original notes, then he typed up two more rough drafts before the final autopsy report was written. What was in that original, his original notes, 
Uh, we can only speculate. We will never know. We'll never know is right. Nobody's been able to prove the single bullet theory, and on the other hand, nobody's been able to disprove it either. And so uh, here we are, uh, November 21st, you and I are talking, 1988, uh, with uh, basically no no answers and a lot more questions than we had 25 years ago. Right. Maybe some things are best not known. And In let's this case, you that. may be right. Okay, thank you so much for being with us, and I know that uh, this is a busy time for you with uh, the many speaking engagements uh, that you do uh, to promote your theory, but thank you for stopping in with us today. And thank you at home for sharing with us as well. Tomorrow we will talk with some people who had a more personal glimpse of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and of course, uh, ever. Most of us will never forget where we were when we heard the tragic news that President John